Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. Well, they all promised it. Yep, Clinton promised it. Bushes have promised it. Indeed, uh, Hillary also promised it. Obama promised it. Trump promised it. At every presidential election, they all promised that they are going to recognise Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel, as Israel themselves decree, and therefore move the embassy, the US embassy, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They all promise it, and I guess in doing so, it helps them raise funds, it helps them get votes, but of course none of them ever ever deliver. Now Donald Trump is a very different creature in fact he joked the other day, he said you know I've kept more promises than I even made and one of those promises was to move the embassy to Jerusalem and today was the day that it happened and his daughter Ivanka and her husband Jared Kushner were there Um, I noticed too uh, quite a lot of congressmen, senators who were also present Uh, let's listen to what Donald Trump had to say today. Exactly 70 years ago, the United States under President Harry Truman became the first nation to recognize the state of Israel. Today, we officially opened the United States Embassy in Jerusalem. Congratulations. It's been a long time coming. Almost immediately after declaring statehood in 1948, Israel designated the city of Jerusalem as its capital. The capital, the Jewish people, established in ancient times. So important. Today, Jerusalem is the seat of Israel's government. It is the home of the Israeli legislature and the Israeli Supreme Court and Israel's prime minister and president. Israel is a sovereign nation with the right, like every other sovereign nation, to determine its own capital. Yet, for many years, we failed to acknowledge the obvious, the plain reality that Israel's capital is Jerusalem. On December 6, 2017, at my direction, the United States finally and officially recognized Jerusalem as the true capital of Israel. Today, we follow through on this recognition and open our embassy in the historic and sacred land of Jerusalem. Well, he couldn't have been clearer, could he? It was the right thing to do. Nations have the right to determine their own capitals. And of course, as somebody myself who believes in the nation state, that's kind of what Brexit was all about. Uh, I do think that Israel have the right to declare Jerusalem as their capital. I support what Trump has done today. I tell you who was really pleased today, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel. Here he was speaking at the opening. Over a century ago, The Balfour Declaration recognized the right of the Jewish people to a national home in this land. And exactly 70 years ago today, President Truman became the first world leader to recognize the newborn Jewish state. Last December, President Trump became the first world leader to recognize Jerusalem as our capital. And today, the United States of America is opening its embassy right here in Jerusalem. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump, for having the courage to keep your promises. Well, you can tell there the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, very, very pleased indeed, and thanking the President for keeping his promises. You'll notice Trump said this has been a long time coming, kind of a dig from Trump at all the Republican and Democrat presidents who made this promise and not delivered. Now, unsurprisingly, uh, this has not happened entirely peacefully, far from it. In fact, along the border with Gaza, uh, there have been huge masses of people throwing stones, trying to get over the border. This has been met by the IDF, the Israeli Defence Force, in no uncertain terms. The last figures we have are that 52 Palestinians have been killed today and something like 2,500 have been wounded. And when Boris Johnson responded on behalf of the British government, that was his main focus. Well, obviously, we're extremely saddened by the loss of life that's taken place. And uh, we understand that there the are some people who've been uh, provoking that, uh, that violence, but on the other hand, uh, there's got to be a restraint in, in the use of, of life fire. And as you know, the position of the United Kingdom is we, we don't agree with the decision of the US to, to move their embassy. Uh, we continue to think that that's playing the wrong card at the, at the wrong time. 
uh, but we remain absolutely committed to a, a two-state solution. Well, Boris Johnson there making it clear that he does not support the decision of Donald Trump to move the embassy. And, of course, Boris's view is, yes, you've guessed it, in line with the European Union, because that's kind of how we do foreign policy or don't do foreign policy in this country today. So what, what has this loss of life been all about? Well, Hamas, who are in control of Gaza, Hamas, who are a strongly Islamist political organisation and who, for most of their life, have wanted the total destruction of Israel. And it's important to understand that. Yeah, I know, you look at the way Israel behaves in defending its borders, you could easily say, isn't this over the top? Isn't it simply too much? But remember, they're surrounded by people who literally want them obliterated. And so Hamas today have organised these mass protests, these threatened incursions on the border, uh, I know that this dispute that's been going on for a couple of thousand years in this part of the world isn't easy to solve. But I want to hear from you. Has Donald Trump done the right thing to follow up on his election promise and to put the embassy now firmly in Jerusalem? Do you think, yep, absolutely, promises are promises, it had to be done. Call me, on 0345 6060 973. Or perhaps you think, do you know what? Supporting Israel is one thing, but this move is provocative, as we see on the border with Gaza today. And if that's how you feel, please text to 84850. And maybe you think, as I do, that actually Trump is not to blame for the violence today. It is Hamas, pure and simple. If you feel that way, tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And of course, you can watch us on Facebook Live and comment there too. And I can see a lot of you want to comment already. Let's go to Sammy, who's a first-time caller to this show, and Sammy's calling from Ealing. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Nigel. So, was Trump right to do this or not? Well, the vast majority of Palestinians, they say it's not an appropriate time because this has sabotaged the whole peace process and the status of Jerusalem should be determined in the final status uh, negotiations. And even President Abbas himself today, he said that he considers the new building of the American embassy as an Israeli settlement. And this has been occurred by the vast majority of Palestinians who have been demonstrating today across the occupied Palestinian territories. It is a provocative, actually, to be uh, announcing or to relocate the embassy on the day of Nakba, uh, in which the Palestinians are marking uh, their expulsion uh, in 1948. It is a very sad, painful event. And this 14th of May will be added to the... Um, sad events to the Palestinian calendar uh, to be marked each year. But Sammy, you know, you make the point that it's not the right time. When would be the right time? The right time would be uh, when Israel is willing to reach peaceful settlement with the Palestinian side. Over 25 years of peace talks proved to be futile. Um, that's, what, that's why Palestinians have lost hope in the so-called peace process. Um, it, is, uh, uh, it is an issue that uh, very sensitive that should be determined in the final status, the final thing um, when both sides sit down and uh, decide to uh, fulfill the agreement to implement all what, what has been agreed upon. So um, the refugees issue, as well as uh, Jerusalem, should be the last thing to be discussed. Uh, first of all, the Israeli side has to um, recognize the Palestinians' right to exist on their own land. And um, so it, it, it's not the right time because, you know, well, there is suffering going on. I mean, isn't the, the truth, on. isn't the truth, Sammy, that many or most people on the Palestinian side resent what happened after 1967 and some of the territory that Israel took. And that makes life very, very difficult. But can I just ask you something, Sammy, as, as a Palestinian, and you've, you've made your case, how do you feel about the behaviour of Hamas today? Well, um, as an independent person uh, who lives here, I've got family back home. I've been following the news around... I've been following the, the developments uh, around the clock because um, I belong to Gaza. Um, it's actually... Um, if you ask any, any Palestinian uh, who is protesting there, they will tell you we are not Hamas supporters. Some can be Hamas supporters. Mm. Uh, the, the masses are driven by years of despair, anger, frustration. They have nothing to lose. Uh, all the Hamas is facilitating its right. They facilitate the uh, arrival of those protesters and also by setting up uh, some tents, uh, medical personnel, 
um, you know, looking after the traffic. But at the end of the day, um, those young teenagers have no hope, no future. Well, be, and they're, and they're being used, Sammy, aren't they? They're being used as a political weapon, uh, some of them reputedly being paid some money for doing it, um, and they're basically being used by Hamas as cannon fodder. The real provocation today, Sammy, is by Hamas, not surely by Donald Trump. Well, those people, um, I mean, you put it somehow, I mean, people are skeptical. Some would agree with what you say, others would disagree. Mm -hmm. I would say that people under occupation, under siege, under 12 years of siege, they are frustrated. They don't care who is pushing them. At the end of the day, there is no bright future. Uh, it's correct. Hamas is paying them, compensating them, uh, giving them some money, some okay. Uh, okay. to look after their families. But at the end of the day, those people have uh, a right to protest. But they are met with fierce, uh, disproportionate force. Yep. Sammy, look, you've made your case and made it beautifully. Thank you very much indeed for calling. Sally on Facebook says... The U.S. government has always been led by the nose by the Israeli government. Now it's now that now that's publicised. Absolutely dreadful, she says. Brad says, if only Theresa May could deliver on her promises the way Mr. Trump has kept his word. A true strong leader, Brad. I agree with you. Um, and Mrs. May, well, she's got some real problems coming up over the next few weeks, and we'll discuss that. I've no doubt, uh, particularly when it comes to the vote on the customs union and how on earth. Will she solve the problem of the Irish border, given the massive concession she made back in December? But we're not discussing that today, Brad, even though I agree with you. And Graham says, this will be the end of mankind. Israel is wrong, and they have learnt nothing of the past. Well, one thing for certain, whenever you discuss this particular issue, uh, there are always very strong opinions on both sides. I thought what was great was to get a Palestinian in London, like Sammy, with whom I disagree but actually able to talk about it in a civilised, sensible, grown-up, and I'm going to say it, it's the LBC way. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, and it's now 7.15. Well, Donald Trump kept his promise, and yes, the US Embassy opened in Jerusalem today, in response to which Hamas organised protests on the border have led to much violence and over 50 people have been killed. But one place where, quite remarkably, peace has broken out is in Washington, D.C. Now, ever since Trump took over as president, uh, the Democrats and the New York Times and CNN and nobody has agreed with a single thing he's done as president. And one of his most vociferous opponents is Chuck Schumer. He's the Senate minority leader for the Democrats. And Schumer has not credited Trump, I think, with a single thing since he got elected. But today, Chuck Schumer says this is a long overdue move. Every nation should have the right to choose its capital. Schumer said, I sponsored legislation to do this two decades ago. And, wait for it, I applaud President Trump for doing it. Suddenly, Donald Trump is the toast of Washington. He'll feel quite unnerved by that, I have absolutely no doubt. So I'm asking you, was it the right thing to do, or was it just openly and willfully provocative? I'm going to go to Dove, first-time caller from Hampstead in North London. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. I'm really enjoying your show and your attempt to be fair and very balanced. I'm trying. I'm nice trying. Show. I'm trying. <laughs> you know, funny, the issues, of course, are very important for many people, and there is too much suffering and bloodshed going on there. Yep. Um, but it, I think Britain is really a place to have civilized conversation, a uh, seat, of course, of one of the first parliaments, and that is still going strong. And we hope the, the things will work out with Brexit. Yep, OK, but are things going to work out with this embassy moving to Jerusalem? That's the question tonight, Dov. I believe it was long overdue to write an, an historical injustice. Um, you keep saying, and I think I was listening also to the programme before of Ian, that uh, these protests were organised because of the moving of the, uh, of the US embassy to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But realise this is the 14th of May. The 14th of May was the end of the British-Palestinian mandate in 1948. 48, yeah. When the last when the last British soldier on, on the midnight of 14th of May left uh, Pal what was called Palestine. Yes. And because of that, a few hours before that, the Jewish council declared the independent state of Israel. So really, that's why, and every year in Israel, there are protests in the territories 
because this is what they call the day of the disaster when the state of Israel was, was destroyed. Was destroyed yes, was uh, yeah. And, and actually, Dov, this is, in fact, and I, I did say it briefly, but let's just emphasize it again to back up your point. There have actually been over 40 deaths in the last month on that border. So today's not a complete one off. All I'm saying is today is rather bigger. Uh, but I take your point. There'd be protests of some kind happening anyway. Right. Now, it's very, first of all, Israel, the only democracy, true democracy in the Middle East. And since 1948, it was already declared the, uh, since its inception, it was declared the capital of Israel. It's where all the democratic seats of power, the Supreme Court, yes. the, the Parliament, the Knesset, the Prime Minister, the Pre- that, for every Israeli, Jerusalem is the capital. And realize also Ian made a very bad mistake when he said that, uh, well, the embassy is in the east part of Jerusalem. And Akola corrected and said, no, it's not. It's in the west part of Jerusalem. This is not uh, defining anything in the, uh, in, the absolute, in the final outcome of negotiations that we all hope will happen when, a, when peaceful, uh, peace negotiations happen. So it's just a statement recognizing an ally, a, dem- a democracy that should be a beacon in that dark part of the world, that they have the right to set up their capital and establish their capital in the historical city of Jerusalem. And it, Jerusalem has no, uh, not as much significance to any other religion or nation as the Jewish people. No, of course. And Dov, do you think, I mean, I'm, I'm listening very carefully to what you said, do you think that Boris Johnson should break free of the European Union and the British Embassy should move there too? I'm shocked at Boris Johnson. He was so, we all had so, so much hope for him about a new Britain unfettered fettered by the, the restraints of the British uh, Parliament, uh, sorry, the, sorry, the European Parliament, I, I yeah, called it the yeah. British Parliament, in Brussels. And here he's just towing the line yeah, of the EU. As we did um, last week over I'm Iran, Dov. disappointed. Absolutely. No, you are. Listen, great call. Thank you very much. Um, anonymous, I get by SMS. Nigel, I wonder what you would say if 54 Israeli civilians, including children, were shot dead by Palestinian police for throwing stones and Molotov cocktails. Uh, well, I'd condemn it, of course, and I'm not supporting what the Israelis have done today. But I am giving some justification of defence in that Hamas have, for most of their lives, wanted Israel to be obliterated. And what the Israeli Defence Force will not allow is a mass incursion, invasion into their territory. Uh, But I do understand, of course, the point that you make. I get on Twitter. Because of Trump's actions, at least 52 people are dead today and thousands injured. Is this something you're happy with? At Nigel underscore Farage. No, I'm not happy with it. I'm not pretending I'm happy with it. Uh, What I am saying, though, is that Israel has declared Jerusalem as their capital. It's where all the apparatus of government is. It is quite logical for the Americans to move their embassy there. Actually, it's imperative they do it because it was an election promise. And for us, this is difficult because we're so used to our politicians willfully lying to us at elections and not carrying it out. Trump is doing it differently. I think he's done the right thing. I certainly don't support what's happened on that border. And I think Hamas have used, and, and, and you know, Dov made the point that actually today is a big day uh, where, where many Palestinians do feel a great injustice. But my goodness me, they've ramped it up today. They're effectively using you know, young Palestinian people, they're using them as cannon fodder. I get also from Mick on SMS, Hamas treat their young people like bullets. They seem to consider that life is cheap. There is no intelligent reason to send their people over the top to openly threaten a democratic country. Well, Mick, I have to say I rather agree with that. Let's ask Simon and Edgware how he feels about today's developments. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Well, um, as we've already heard, long overdue. And Let's, let me correct what Sam has said. In yep. 1947, you'll appreciate this, 1947, the UN decreed that the, that the country should be split. Half for Jews, half for Palestinians. Yep. That was rejected by the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, who was a neo-Nazi, and in, uh, in alliance with Hitler, as you probably know. I have told, seen some of that history, yes. Yeah, and he told his people, leave your homes and we'll come back and drive the Jews into the sea. Just want to correct that little bit of historical. But let's move on from that. Here we are today. This is long overdue. No American president had the guts to do it. It is a pledge. And let's look at what's happening on the Gaza border. Let's imagine that a couple of hundred people got through that border and Hamas have admitted that amongst those people are their own terrorists, loaded up with explosives and arms to try. Imagine if they got through to the town of Ashkelon, Sinarot, which are the first Israeli towns, and there's also one or two kibbutzes nearby, ran amok, took hostages and murdered civilians. 
Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? That is a nightmare scenario. And the IDF, in my opinion, have been rather restrained under the circumstances. Restrained? Country. Simon, yeah. if you see the yeah. pictures of... I mean, they're using... Well, listen, well, what choice do they have? You have what country could tolerate tens of thousands of people heading for that border and trying to... No, no, no. To... I know, Simon, I understand that. It's just the use of the word restrained. I, I don't necessarily agree with. I mean, using snipers... Right. If you don't like that word, they could be... There's a lot of countries like China and Russia who would have just machined on people on the border willy-nilly. We've seen that. We knew that happened. We saw that happen in Tenement Square in 1976. But look, let's, let's just... Sorry, if you don't like that word, let's just look at the situation. This is a very cynical nasty and cowardly attempt by Hamas to use their own people, yep. as you've already, you, have you already mentioned yourself, as cannon fodder. Yep. And therefore, it is incumbent. Any, body, any country has the right to defend its borders. Hamas have used their own people cynically, very cynically and very irresponsibly. And for me, I hold them responsible for those deaths. And let's be honest, Nigel, even if the Jerusalem opening hadn't happened today, those you, there would have been violent demonstrations regardless. Look, Israel left the Gaza Strip in 2005, and in return, it's had around 8,000 rockets. And also, just one other point... I know, I know, I know. Simon, I don't want to get too deep. I don't want to get too deep into the history of this. Um, but but you basically think it's long overdue, and it's the right thing. And I thank you, and I am going to move on. I've got to loads of callers on this. Paul on Facebook says, the UK must move their embassy to Jerusalem. It's the right thing to do. Cassie says, moving the US embassy to Jerusalem was authorised by US legislators decades ago. Trump had the courage to do what others haven't. And Cassie, that's very much the point Chuck Schumer is making today when he comes out and, shock horror, supports the President. Mary is calling from Croydon. Mary, good evening to you. Good evening. So, has Donald Trump done the right thing? No, not at all. Um, Actually, what I wanted to talk about is why is it illegal to do that? Uh, Several of your callers and some of the commentators were saying well, what's the big deal? It's West Jerusalem. And this is exactly what I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yes, West Jerusalem is under the sovereignty of Israel uh, historically. However, what Israel done, as you know, and what have you said yourself, is that it annexed East Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. By doing so, the unified Jerusalem became the capital of Israel. Therefore, transferring any uh, capital, uh, any embassies to the unified Jerusalem is illegal. The question is why? Under international law, why international law does not allow making these kind of changes? Well, and international law, Mary, you mean by that UN um, resolutions and statements, yeah? Not only UN resolutions, you have the Geneva Conventions before that, you have the Hague regulations, you have all that. There is a huge pot of law that relates to this kind of situation. Doesn't the democratic process in America, where Trump says he'll do this and then does it, doesn't that in some ways... Can I come to that in a second? Go on. Can you just give me one second to explain why international law deals with it in this situation? The whole idea is that occupation is not permanent. Occupation is by force and is not meant to be permanent. Because of that, any changes on the ground to the demography, to the resources, transferring of population, taking out land and all that, depriving the occupied territories from the possibility of coming back to its feet and depriving the possibility of ending occupation. This is why it's illegal under international law. So it's not enough to say it's It's important to understand why it's illegal. It's because it will not, as we say, it will not... I'm kind of... No, Mary, you've made the point. The phone line is cutting in and cutting out. Mary makes the point. It's against international law. It's not the right thing to do. Lots of strong views. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively in LBC. It's now 7.30. Trump moves the embassy to Jerusalem. There are violent protests, many people killed, thousands wounded. But I'm asking you, has he done the right thing to keep that election promise? But before I go back to that, some European news. So Italy has a new government. A coalition has been formed between the Five Star Movement, that's the party that was set up by Beppe Grillo, the first really online political party we've ever seen in the world, and they 
have gone into coalition with the League, the Lega, who are predominantly a northern Italian party and are very, very Eurosceptic and tough on immigration. I know both of these political parties. In fact, at the moment, um, I'm working with the Five Star Movement in the European Parliament. I work with the League in the past. So I know both of these parties. And these parties are what the Brussels mainstream would call populists. So if you accept that term, this is the first populist government of a major European country. It's a very, very big day. We don't yet know the name of the Prime Minister. They're going to find a compromise candidate between the two different parties. But what we do know is they intend to cut taxation quite radically. They intend to do away with pension reforms that would have seen pensions being lowered. Um, they're going to go on a spending spree. Quite how the Germans are going to respond to this, I do not know. And I think that the pressure this is now going to put on the Eurozone over the years to come is simply enormous. So you've heard me say it before, I'll say it again. The Brexit vote, the Trump election, weren't just a one-off in 2016, they were the beginning of an absolutely fundamental change across the West. Now, someone who's trying to stop that fundamental change is a man called David Miliband. He is, of course, the former Foreign Secretary who's been living in New York for some years, working for a refugee charity, earning $600,000 a year as a salary. Um, it's an organisation, International Rescue, that in the past has been funded by, yeah, you've guessed it, the European Union, and of course the British government has put in money too, and of course people like George Soros have also funded it. But Miliband is back and he's telling us that if we were to leave the customs union and the single market it would be an economic catastrophe we must not have a hard Brexit in fact he now defines a hard Brexit as anything that is not full regulatory alignment with the European Union that is a completely dishonest interpretation of of the Brexit result. And he, along with Sir Nick Clegg and Nicky Morgan today, they are trying their absolute best to, to basically take away from the British people the victory they won in Brexit. It's dishonest, David, as far as I'm concerned. Go back to New York and enjoy yourself. Let's move back to whether Trump has done the right thing or not. Let's go to Louise, a first-time caller from Winchmore Hill. Good evening, Louise. Oh, good evening, Nigel. So how do you feel about this move today, Louise? Um, it's a total breach of United uh, of the nation's law, in fact, the, the world's law. Um, they've totally, utterly disregarded the disputed land of, of, of Jerusalem, and it's been disputed for 70 years. So it's a totally wrong move, in my opinion. So why, Louise, if, if, if that's the case, why have people like Clinton and Obama promised they would do this too? Well, obviously, they haven't done it effectively. Their promises haven't been met by going through the right means. If they'd gone through the right means, and negotiations would have been settled years ago. So someone's not done their job right, obviously. And we're talking about previous presidents, not in just America, but around the world. And in the meantime, the people that pay the price, and they continue to pay the price with their lives, is the Palestinian people. Well, that's certainly right to say that a lot of Palestinian people are being killed and thousands wounded. So let's not um, yeah. under, let's not underplay the severity in human terms of what's happened I today. Mean, but aren't they being used, painful. Louise? Aren't there? Aren't yeah. these young Palestinians being used by Hamas in the most cynical right. way? Can I just say, who has evidence or proof of the fact that every fifty member of uh, Palestinian that's been killed is young? Have we actually gone ahead and done a head count? Have we done actually a full head count as well as found out who these people well, were from their backgrounds, well, from their lives? If you look at the pictures, they're pretty much, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're all young people, but they are predominantly young people, Louise. Well, we don't have, we don't have any physical other than a picture on the screen to show you who these, where these people came from, what they were trying to say. In fact, the 2,000 plus people that have disputed this, this move today is, is Palestinian normal people. Not all Hamas that the radio has been blaring about. All right. Well, um, OK, we talk about Hamas because, of course, they are actually controlling Gaza. And we talk, Louise, about Hamas because for most of their existence, they've wanted the total destruction of the state of Israel. I mean, is it any wonder, you know, against people like that, that Israel choose to defend themselves? 
I think what Israel did in the beginning was take land that wasn't theirs, which they feel they've been entitled to. But the fact of the matter is, Palestinian people have been there just as long as Israeli people have been there. Mm. That's, scientific, that's historical proof. There's evidence to prove that. But they feel that they have a right to take the whole land for themselves because they're Jews. But unfortunately, Palestinians have been settled there for centuries just as much as they have. They've gone around the wrong means. They should go around the right means. So do you think, Louise, the negotiations. do you think we should re-examine uh, the borders post the 1967 war. Absolutely. Okay. Someone hasn't been doing their job. Okay, right. no, Louise, I understand that point. It's a perfectly valid point. Uh, not sure it'll get very far with the Israelis, but I understand it, Louise. Thank you very much indeed for your call. Chris is very angry. He says, I have supported Trump in the past on certain issues, but I no longer support him, as this and the Iran deal are unnecessarily provocative. It will lead to massive trouble. Michael takes a different view. He says America has every right to put its embassy where it pleases. Hamas have simply used the move as an excuse to put their own people in harm's way in order to generate anti-Israeli propaganda. Well, I can assure you, across many of the world's news channels tonight, there is plenty of anti-Israeli, whether it's propaganda or not, you'll have to make your own mind up, but clearly, clearly, Hamas were looking for a very large-scale provocation, partly because of this move, and partly, as has been pointed out, because, historically, you know, this was a big day back in 1948 that many Palestinians see as a huge and unjust defeat. Let's go to Tel Aviv in Israel, to Robert, who's a first-time caller to the show. Good evening, Robert. Hello, Nigel. I'm a big fan. What I really like your show. And you listen from Tel Aviv on a regular basis, do you? On a regular basis, every evening at 9pm local time. Nine, oh, yeah, so you're, you're two hours on. Um, and, and so, what, I mean, tell me something. What's the, what's the mood in Tel Aviv today? Well, they're ecstatic, I'm telling you. Uh, I mean, it's even driving the country a little bit bonkers. Right. I mean, have you heard? They named, they named the, once they heard Trump is moving the, uh, the embassy, they named a train station after him. Then they named a square after him. What, today? Then they named a football team after him. <laughs> they named a football team after him. Now, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to stop at Trump Station, go to Trump Square to the Trump game? I don't understand anything. Wow. Anyway, I don't... Well, I think it's a really... It's the right move, but I really don't think you should get that much credit. I mean, it passed through Congress, didn't it? Like 20 well, years ago. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right, Robert. It did, but every American president, you know, has gone before the electorate promising they would do it, and none of them have ever had the guts to follow through because, Robert, they've known there would be international condemnation from the European Union, the United Nations, and others. So, you know, he does deserve... I mean, you know, whether, you, whether you think it's a good thing to have done or a bad thing to have done, uh, you know, he has kept his promise. Um, and from what you're saying, people in Israel are ecstatic. Uh, how, do you, how do you view... Uh, the behaviour of the IDF today. And, uh, two and a half thousand people have been wounded, over 50 have been killed. Have they behaved with necessary restraint, in your opinion, Robert? Well, you know, it's a big shame. It really is a shame. First of all, it wasn't today. This thing has been going on for a month. Yes, for I, a know. Month I know. I know. Yeah. It's been going on for a month. And today is a really big day, but I'm not really sure if it's because of the embassy. I think it's a mixture of, first of all, I think Ramadan starts tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Also, yeah, uh, Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan is tomorrow, I think. Yeah, that's right. I think it depends on the moon phase or something like that. Mm. Also, they were really angry because we bombed them. Uh, we bombed like southern Syria, like last week. Yeah. Showed them. Yes. Then, then we, then they got really mad when we won the Eurovision Song Contest. And then, <laughs> of course, of course, amidst all of that, it's quite a week for Israel all round, really, isn't it? Oh, it, oh, it's really, it's a really great. Thing. I mean, we it's to, really to be honest, thing. Robert, we don't talk about Eurovision anymore because we come nearly last every single year, um, and with Brexit, it's definitely not helped our ratings. You know, um, Robert, is there any argument well, here? Is there any? Is there any compromise? on the post-1967 borders. Is there any compromise from Israel on this, or are these absolutes as far as you and your country are concerned? Sure, sure, sure. 
I think they're going to compromise. I think they would be able to compromise. I think we could reach some sort of an arrangement, but there has to be a border. I mean, what does, what does Bojo want us to do? You know, let them in. You know what it's going to cause, what, how that's going to affect our housing prices, our Israeli NHS. Yeah, well, I, help us give up our sovereignty. Robert, I've no idea what Bojo really wants at all. Um, he seems to want what the European Union want. Robert, we are out of time. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for calling from Tel Aviv. And as he says, maybe the icing on the cake was the Eurovision Song Contest. Quite a week for Israel. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC. It's now 7.45. Well, Trump moves that embassy to Jerusalem. Large-scale protests and much loss of life on the border with Gaza. Uh, Before I get back to that, though, fascinating, the Pew Research Centre have been doing a survey across Europe of how the public feel about mainstream media and the extent to which they trust them. 67% of people in the Netherlands said they trust what mainstream media tells them. 64% in Germany trust what mainstream media tells them. And in the United Kingdom, only 32% of Brits trust what the news media are telling them fascinating that is a complete collapse in this country we just don't believe many of the big media organizations we think they're biased we think they put their own spin on things maybe many of you today would have seen news reports on what's happening on the border of gaza and you may think hmm isn't this really being a bit anti-israeli i know some have said that to me already Uh, but of course i hope very much The LBC is not part of that lack of trust because LBC actually isn't about what we tell you. It's about what you tell us. This is the one place where it's your view that matters more than anybody else. But that to me is a fascinating statistic. Our collective faith and belief in our political leaders and our established media institutions has fallen dramatically. All of which says to me that if Brexit was a shock... We could well in this country have other big shocks in the years to come. So, did Trump do the right thing, or was it a provocative and unnecessary act? Nick is a first-time caller from Swindon. Good evening, Nick. Hello, Nigel. So, was it was it the right thing to do or not? Well, I think for any sort of long-term peace uh, solution in the Middle East, it's a complete disaster, really. A disaster. Yeah, a complete disaster. I mean, he's going against everything that was agreed in the Oslo Peace Accords. Um, I mean, to be honest, America have long uh, fashioned themselves as some sort of honest peace broker between Israel and Palestine, Mm -hmm. but they never really condemned Israeli war crimes, settlements or occupation in Palestine. And it's Trump's just really kind of showing the world what U.S. policy has been for a long time, which is a clear bias towards Israel. Yeah, I mean, I think you could in the past have said there was a bias towards Israel. I think with Donald Trump now as president, it's pretty clear he's picked a side. Um, as he and, and indeed, as he has in the rest of the region, you know, he's gone with the Sunni Saudi Arabia against, if you like, the Shia Iran. So you're right, Nick. Uh, America has here very firmly picked a side. Uh, but perhaps it's not surprising uh, that the side that Trump has picked, uh, you know, believes in the nation state. It's about sovereignty. It's about many of those things that Trump himself stands for, isn't it? Well, I think, but but by saying that, by implication, you're saying that the Palestinians don't believe in a nation state or sovereignty. And well, it's really hard to judge that because they've never had the opportunity to have a nation state. I or think sovereignty. it's deeper, Nick, than that, isn't it? I mean, I think. In, in what sense? Well, uh, you know, Trump is somebody who talks about Judeo Christian culture you know, being uh, kind of uh, what America was built on, the values of America built on Judeo-Christian culture, uh, and he sees Hamas and he sees many of the Palestinians as being pretty extreme Islamist groups. Isn't that actually very much at the heart of this? Well, it's at the heart of it, but then I think that's fundamentally wrong, that that opinion that he has of... Um, people of Palestine is clearly leading to a policy which is killing, um, I mean, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians over the course of uh, the past, um, well, ever since uh, Israel has been a state, basically. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, Nick, those, th- those mass thousands of people didn't have to be at, the, at, at that border today, did they? No, no, they didn't. But I mean, it's the, the people of Gaza have been under a long term siege 
where there's widespread famine and a complete lack of any sort of basic human uh, right or life that you would expect. And I don't really blame them for being angry at the lack of opportunities that they face for such a long time. Yeah. And it's also quite evident that we hear about these protesters that are being aggressive and uh, provocative towards the Israeli soldiers, but there's been no, from what I understand, from what I know, there's been no Israeli um, soldiers wounded or killed, yet there's been, uh, is it now 50, 60 um, people of Gaza who've been killed and yeah. thousands more wounded? And it's just, there's a clear imbalance between those two figures, which I think really, um, it, it shows the clear imbalance of power between the two sides. Nick, you've made your point very passionately. Thank you very much indeed. Joy on Facebook says Trump was right and brave to stand up to those who deny Israel the right to be a nation and to nominate the capital city. Jerusalem would be multicultural and multi-faith, but, well, let's see. Uh, you know, uh, the, there are many parts of that region that used to be multi-faith and aren't, sadly, today. Nigel, why can't people like you grow up and start condemning Israel's inhuman attitude towards the Palestinians? Israel will surely never have peace with this attitude, Abby and Surrey. Abby, I do accept that Trump has chosen a side. I just said so to the last caller. Um, and I perhaps accept also uh, that in the next few years, the chances of a realistic settlement um, just aren't there. Uh, but uh, you can talk about uh, Israel's behaviour uh, but equally, understand the psychology of being a small, independent nation surrounded by people, many of whom literally want you to be obliterated. I think perhaps that does explain something of Israel's action, even if it does look pretty over the top. Daniel is calling from Freiburg in Switzerland. Good evening, Daniel. Good evening, Nigel. Thank you for taking my call. Not one bit. So how do you feel about Donald's decision to go and move to Jerusalem with the embassy? Well, he did uh, the right choice, really. I mean, every country um, should be allowed uh, to, to establish its capital where, whatever they want. I mean, I cannot imagine any country telling the UK, uh, well, actually, we're going to place um, our embassy in Birmingham, not in London. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. And many of the uh, your previous callers, I think they are um, I, either ignoring some facts or, or just making them up. Um, all the territories that Israel has um, conquered over the years has been in defensive wars. Um, the original UN resolution of 1947 was accepted by the Jews living there. It was rejected by the Muslims living in, in Jordan in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq, and all of them conjunctively um, attacked the state of Israel. <clears throat> yes. Over those, well, uh, and it happened again in 67, in 73. And um, those territories were acquired by Israel in defensive wars. And thanks to that, for instance, Israel um, could make peace with Egypt by returning the Sinai Peninsula. Otherwise, um, they would be still um, attacking Israel because it seems that to them, um, making war is, is free. I mean, well, many of them, Daniel, Israel. as you say, many of them just don't accept the fact that Israel was established as a state at all, do they? Exactly. That, that's, the, that's the real problem. And, yep. and I wonder how on earth do these people expect Israel to make peace with uh, neighbours that don't recognise the, the, the right, the very right to exist. No, I, I mean, Daniel, it's, it's impossible. absolutely. And, and, and uh, uh, and then the reason why and you were talking about this um, mainstream media before, um, you, you were totally right. This very same reason why um, there's all this bias um, against Israel in, in the UK institutions and UK media is for the very same reason why all these uh, sex scandals in Rochdale and um, Rotram and uh, and all this in Birmingham uh, well, were silenced by, by d in decades, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to go into that, but Daniel, thank you for your point of view. I've got time for one last caller. T David from Belfast, I'm sorry. You've got 30 to 40 seconds. Welcome. Hello, Nigel. Good evening. I just want to say this is an amazing day. As being a British Jew, I am thrilled that President Trump moved his embassy to Jerusalem. I will just make one point. Yep. Why is the world not condemning Hamas's army of people rushing to the Israeli border to fire stones and fire fire these here petrol bombs at the Israeli guards. I say this, if you come with force, 
Israel will defend its people and its land from anybody who seeks to do us harm. Well, David, I'll tell you what, if nobody else is making that point across the media in Britain, you've just done so and done it very succinctly. And thank you very much for your call. David, very, very pleased there. Uh, The formation of Israel was always going to be controversial. In fact, to begin with, what is now known as Uganda was proposed as being the home for the Jewish people, but that was never actually going to work, but it was proposed. Um, I think Trump's done the right thing. That's my view. It's horrible to see what's happening on the border. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show. I'm back tomorrow night at 7. Coming up at 10 o'clock tonight, it's Ian Collins. But up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thank you very much indeed.